has the contact lens charges and stuff on it. This will have all the charges, all the CPT codes. The print is bigger for those of us who are bordering presbyopic. Um, and so that'll be helpful. So um, we are uh, planning to have those route slips in all of our locations by the end of the, the first week in <coughs> January, probably. So it's our goal to move one step closer to stopping to transport all of these. So it's going to take us making sure we're charging out the things we need to charge out. Like I said, if you see any kinky things, some weird stuff, let Ruth know. She's going to be your goo goo, or guru on that. Goo goo. -goo. Yeah. Let's call her goo goo. -goo. I am that. You know, we have like Grammy and different names for special people in our lives. Let's just call her goo goo. We'll address our emails. Yes. Dear goo goo. Go ahead, Bree. Um, so, like, if you add a diagnosis at the end when you've already submitted the code, I notice the diagnosis will pop up on the coding page. Uh, does that mean that it's through or I already submitted like say I submit the code page but then they want to add another diagnosis into the plan. Do I have to pass you about that or so a new diagnosis on the impression and plan page? No, you don't need to add no. that. Okay. So if she but I think what she's asking is should she send a task in relation to the coding page if there's a new diagnosis. I guess if it would impact what you you're billing. If you if you're if you inadvertently forgot a diagnosis that was relevant to a test that you were um, charging for, mm -hmm. then yes, I would send a task. Okay, so it would be like related to a test. Or yeah. For it I to mean, be too impactful to the Yeah, exactly. Diagnosis. I mean, if it's just a, what would be, you did cataracts, but now you, um, you want to add what? So um, in blepharitis or SPK, I was say for you, you would retina, need to, yeah. You would have the retinal diagnosis for the OCT. Maybe then they said, oh, and you have cataracts. And, or yeah, yes. Yeah, and right. that wouldn't really be impactful if and when we needed um, to get a copy of that chart note for, for the billing department to submit alongside a charge. We would be able to print it, and everything we would need to be there would be there. Okay. Um, the only difference is. You're not linking it to a test, so therefore you don't have to link the cataract okay. for the auto post of work. Okay. Yeah. Good question. What other questions? Yes. Um, I mean, this isn't relevant to everyone in this room, but do we need to code the MAC injections on the coding page? Um, oh. Even if they're not in for like a visit, it's Where just some the treatment. There's some parts of the <coughs> clinic that are exceptions. At okay, the so that's right now. For now, we're just not going to worry at about the it. moment. Okay, but yes, eventually you'll update it'll us. Call, right? Okay, yeah. perfect. Pre ops can't do it. Um, not yet. You know, so there's certain areas of the clinic, okay. a lot of cosmetic stuff, so mm -hmm. it'll eventually get there. But. The reason is right now, in order to have. Um, stuff built through coding, correct me if I'm wrong, Ruth, you almost have to have an impression diagnosis linked that day to the test you're doing okay. or a procedure that you're doing. In the future, in the updates, we'll have the ability to say, build this OCT and then it'll link it to a previous diagnosis or impression from a recent visit. But right now, we don't have that ability. I think the upgrade is going to help with that a little bit. If not this one, definitely the next <coughs> one. So, was your question along those lines, or mm -hmm. no? I just want to know one. if I'm currently supposed to be putting the OCTs on the coding page. If, yes. you're if you're putting it on the route slip, we said this at the very beginning, it's kind of one of those things, if you're putting it on the route slip, it should be on the coding page. Oh, because I was told I wasn't, it wasn't working so that I don't have to do that. Yeah, so the, the issue is on the classic OCT interpretation page, mm -hmm. there's a spot where we click bill and it pushes it over there automatically. On but the on the, the, the KRC page. report, we don't yeah. quite have that just yet. Right. Um, we're working with Dr. Cruz on his OCT interpretation piece of things. So the goal is that if it's not on the coding page, you should be keying it into the coding page. Okay, so I should be working on doing it right now, but yes. we're going to automate. 
Hopefully. It's a lot of work. <laughs> I understand, because you guys do a lot of OCTs. It's just like the contact lens team, the number doesn't pull for the amount of the contact lens fitting right now, so they have to manually enter it. So we do know that there are some kinks in the system, so we're working on trying to, to make those work. Unfortunately for us, we have altered our templates so much, and we've been like, oh, I don't like this, do that instead so much that we've killed some of the automated capabilities. So Ruth and I are taking the gospel of not changing things to the doctors a little bit and saying because you don't like to scroll or because you don't like this or that on your page, you've broken down the efficiency of our tool, which is NextGen. And we pay a lot of money for it. So we should be utilizing it instead of like, oh, I don't like that color. So we're working with the doctors. <laughs> we're working with the doctors. I'm, I'm joking with Ruth because <laughs> that's how it feels sometimes to her. So if a doctor's watching this, we all love you. Um, but that being said, we are, we are trying to, to take the, to them the fact that, yeah, you might have to scroll for two seconds, but this is what you're getting if you don't break the templates. Because, for example, the KRC OCT report or whatever, that's a template that we've broken the automation because Dr. Cruz didn't like a couple things on the page. So what we're doing is we're showing him the new updated page and saying, can we work within these parameters, please? Um, because it would help us. So this whole template, this is not a next-gen template. No, this is not this at is, all. This was built by us, and so it doesn't have any coding on it, mm -hmm. and this is what they'd like to use, and this is a, the problem that it's causing. So it's putting more work on you all because this doesn't link to anything. And to make it link, I could break a million other things, but I'm um, going to try. Um, so that being said, we would like to try to drive them to use the pre-built template that makes all the charges appear correctly. <laughs> so it has those templates are getting better and less cumbersome, which uh, NextGen has really focused on ophthalmology in recent years because ophthalmologists have used NextGen for a long time and are not happy. And a lot of people, you guys probably have colleagues in the industry, a lot of people are getting out of NextGen and they're investing in new EMRs because NextGen wasn't listening. And Ruth has let us know that they are listening now. <laughs> they get that. When people pull out of NextGen, they understand what the dollar amount is. And so they've been doing focus groups and they've been taking suggestions and they have routine round tables and things like that to try to improve the ophthalmology functionality. So as a result, we're chronically getting in these updates better pages, better templates that are more suited for what our needs are. So whenever we have an update, Ruth is trying to get the doctors driving them to look at it in the test database and say, hey, I get it, it's different, but could we try it? So that's one of the pages we'd like to try to get the doctors to look at again. Right, so. And, and so you guys know you kind of are already using, so this, this is your AIP, your uh, Assessment Impression and Plan page, and although you might not realize it, this is actually what the way of the world is going towards oh later. Yeah, no, um, no, 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 <laughs> this is not what it's going to look like in this next update. This is not going to be update driven. This will be not instituted until you all are well trained and very comfortable on this. But this is the way it's going to end up looking. And this flow and function is going to be different. Um, unfortunately, I have no control over that because they have said we're not going to update two separate sets of templates anymore. And we use kind of the old Retina 10 tab templates, this, this whole For, tab section. And that's not something our Retina doctors Right, created. it's not. It, no, we that, put all of that that right no, that had nothing to do with <laughs> our providers. Um, but this workflow is going to be changing and there's many reasons why it's going to be changing and I'm not going to go into it, but it, there's a lot of reasons why. So, that being said, I don't want you to panic. Really, there's no panic involved. Um, our next upgrade uh, in January will be almost identical to what this looks like, what we use currently. There's just going to be a few tweaks here and there, so I do encourage you guys to try to get on to the test database um, and just kind of play around in some of the templates. Um, however, the majority of them, I'd probably say 90%, 
look exactly the way you have them now. Um, but that being said, um, this new scroll, it's not a, it's not a tab here, tab here, tab here. It's more of here's everything that's needed in an exam and you scroll down the page or you toggle down the page or you roll through, you cycle down through the pages. Um, that's kind of the way it's going. So um, there's some good things about it. There's some bad things about it. But being said, that's what we're, what we're gonna be up against. But it will be on our time frame. It's not gonna be a crutch of, oh, we have to do this within the next three months. There's no end date set so far. I've just been told they are going away, so get prepared. So what, what I'm planning to do is work with the tech supervisors. Those of you who've been um, at the Eye Center for a while can probably remember that we had um, a couple of really light weeks where we scheduled people for training sessions on NextGen. And we just had a bunch of computers set up and we just, you were scheduled for two hours of NextGen training. And Ruth, or one of the super users, was there. And you went in and you looked at things and you played around in things and you got a really good um, base for what this was gonna look like. And then we had test databases all over the place so that everybody could play on stuff yeah. um, in downtime. And that's the goal for this too. It's not gonna be like we have a lunch and learn and then the next week we switch to that. Right. <laughs> we're not gonna do that, I'm not that cruel. Um, but we, my goal is that we're doing those training sessions by next summer, by the, the, the time when we start to get lighter over the summer months, and everybody cycles through, and I'd like to see this implemented by the third quarter of next year. That's the plan, just uh, long term, just to give you a heads up if you were wondering when that's gonna happen, so. And the next gen does realize that ophthalmology, <coughs> it is their biggest group. So we do have a lot of pull, not we, us specifically, if but only. <laughs> uh, yes, if only. Um, we do have a lot of pull, and so they are working very intently on the ophthalmology platform. And there's been lots of complaints and problems, and it's archaic and old. And why do we practice that way? You know, why are we given this as a practice base when we don't practice that way? So that's kind of what's driving some of this um, this change. Um, that being said even though we don't, we, eye center wise, don't have a lot of pull, I am on a lot of the panels and uh, the round tables and the groups, so I can give you the latest greatest as it's coming out. And I do try to be a uh, beta site so that we might actually even get it earlier than most people so we can work that into our workflows and testing and everything, so. Bruce signs us up for everything. I try. <laughs> trying to torture y'all as much as I can. Uh -huh. So what questions, I mean, you've got Ruth here, you've got Billing, what questions do you guys have? Whether it's auto post or just in general. So can you show where you were pulling up something that was, you pulled up something that gave a list of the procedures that when you were looking for the OCD. Oh, right there, okay. So all I did is, yeah, I the, 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 the um, resolution on this is, for crappy. some reason it's, it's crappy not working but if you see you're on all I did was I'm gonna I'm pretending I'm gonna make a charge in here right so I need to add new this pulls up and what is the description of the procedure so these are all of the procedures that are in our database and if you know the procedure code or just you don't you know the description like you saw me type in OCT yeah and I did a search and there's our OCTs so that it's easier to do that than to go back to the OCT page and click the... You More than likely. You okay. should go to the OCT page because you have to do an interpretation of the OCT. If, exactly. it, hasn't been, if it hasn't been done, mm -hmm. but if by chance the OCT page has been visited and the interpretation is done, but for some reason the billing part um, didn't get checked, oh. you could just charge it charge here. It. Okay. So long as you're for sure that everything over here is there, okay. the interpretation and yeah. everything is there. Because that's one of the... Yeah, okay. But yes, you can do that. Okay. Yes, Josh. So who's responsible for doing billing when they just come in for a visual field OCT and never took that? The technician who um, is, is in, that in that particular role okay. is responsible for doing the coding page. So if I'm circling it on the route slip, I need to be putting it in the computer. How do you tie that back to the 
diagnosed. So if I had, days. so if I had, um, if you were doing an OCT visual field only, so, only, mm, sure. you're going to have to make an impression and plan page. Yeah, you're supposed to do a chief complaint that says testing only, patient here for visual field OCT, and then go to your impression plan page, put why we're doing the visual field. Which we should have an order for, yeah, unless put, it's an outside doctor. And then put office. a visual field OCT done today, and then generate your full, your patient plan and everything, and then go to your coding page and everything. And down there. Okay. you do know that except for when you're doing a surgery scheduling sheet. So in this instance, the patient's just coming in for an OCT visual field. You can use your previous diagnoses and pull the diagnosis that the patient potentially was having the visual field OCT for. All right, that is okay for everything except when the patient is scheduling a surgery. When you schedule a surgery, it messes everything up, and the impression implants do not come over when you've pulled it from previous. So, it's, so I mean, it's a great tool, but if you're not thinking, you're going to cause yourself more harm than good. So, so if you are doing, I, my perspective as the clinical director, and I mean, I can't sit with each of you and watch you. Believe it or not, we don't video what happens in the exam rooms. Um, but that being said. <laughs> If the patient is seeing the doctor, the doctor is giving you an impression. You should be putting in the impression plan, bringing this out. You should be doing it the way that is appropriate for that visit. You shouldn't just be pulling. It's just like copy data forward. That shouldn't be your go-to. In a scenario where the doctor has ordered a test based on a diagnosis he made last week, the diagnosis has already been made, the impression plan page has already been done, it's completely appropriate for you as a technician who does not diagnose to go to the previous diagnoses and link that diagnosis from last week to the test, right? Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, that's completely fine to use that. The issue with using this all the time is if you're, if you're zoned out and you do this and then the doctor said, the patient's like, well, I kind of want to have surgery. Okay, so now you got to start all over. Right because you didn't do it right the first time, right? So that's the difference. It can come and bite you. <laughs> Big time. Because it's the, what we're finding is that everything is so linked um, that now that the surgery department is doing op notes and they're doing uh, notes in the OR, everything that we're putting on the impression plan page kind of is linking through that entire process. So even if you think you fix it on a surgery page, it causes problems on the ASC portion if you put it on the impression plan page wrong. And that's why... And that's why we don't want you to use a bunch of shortcuts. We have asked you not to schedule surgeries OU. Right. You have to schedule your surgeries independently, right eye, left eye, have two separate entries into the grid because that data goes over to the ASC and they have to check that patient in in the ASC on the appropriate eye for that, that first surgery event and then they have to come out, they have to create another encounter and go to the second eye so that they have a separate template for the OR for the first eye, a separate template for the OR setting for the second eye, and then the op notes can generate correctly for each eye and it has the correct diagnosis. Well, that plays in the pre-op as well. Mm -hmm. so it it, it all goes the all the way through from the yeah. minute it yeah. leaves your guys' hands to the way it pushes through the clinic, it, it all ties right. together. So that's one reason. I mean, it, it should just be standard practice anyway, just so everybody's in a habit. Anything that's like that, don't grab and Just make sure though it, yeah. it, it goes to your diagnoses as well. So it's not just the surgical event, it's the diagnoses well, that's what I'm like have to be right and left. Mm -hmm. You should just make it habit. Correct. Always just split everything, never throw down an OU. Which is where you guys as tech supervisors come in because you're doing chart notes and chart reviews and when right. we find things in surgery scheduling that are wrong, and we're bringing it back to you, the whole purpose is to educate the technicians. It's not like we have a running tab where we're like, oh, Shirlene did five this month, and it, we're not doing that. I mean, the whole purpose is this, is this is going through every single step of the patient experience. And when the patient gets the day of surgery, and we can't say, okay, we're gonna do surgery on your right eye this morning, Mr. Jones, 
we're like, well, let's see what surgery we're gonna. We look like, oh crap, do we want to have surgery in here? <laughs> yeah, right. You know, well, we need to know. I think. Can I skip to Josh sure. and Bree? Yeah. These guys had some questions. So my my question is, <clears throat> again, to the visual field OCT deal, you're not building an exam, so can you submit the code with just the yes. testing on it? Yes. Second question is, when my surgery scheduling grid has blank spots in it, how am I supposed to fix it? Because what I do is I put the code in there manually, and I was also in pre-op told that the one of the first two codes has to be the surgery op. So if I have you know, diabetes and then insulin and then cataracts, well now it's the third one in the grid. It's not the first or second. So if I change it to the second or if I sort on that page, if I sort on that page, the grid on the surgery schedule and page is a mess. You have to sort your diagnoses before you start addressing them and adding them to the grid. If you sort afterwards, it's totally messed so up. So how do, I, how do you, you want have to, to fix you, it if it comes up? If it, so if it comes up, the way you have to fix it is you have to delete it from the grid and sort it, it the right way. So I delete it from the grid on that plan page. Correct. And Correct. then redo everything and then go to the surgery scheduling and it should work. Correct. That's okay. the way it's supposed awesome. to work. All right. Ruth, yes. is that even an issue anymore since we select yeah. the... So it is an issue. It is an issue. It is an issue for me because yeah. I don't know because now they, they, they disappear. Yeah. I mean, even if it's the last one, that's the one I select, that's the one that populates. That's why I was wondering. It populates Wait. on your piece of paper, but it doesn't populate the grid. So then that has to be first. Okay. Even if they're... So if they're diabetic, glaucoma, and cataract, if cataract you're doing cataract surgery, you have to do So rule of thumb first. is this. Okay. Think it through, okay? From a clinical perspective, mm. you guys are clinical people. So we're going to do surgery. What's the most impactful thing this second? The thing we're doing surgery on, right? So that's our number one. The diabetes can be there. It might be what drove them in to see us, but it's not the thing we're attacking today, right? So a patient comes in for a complete exam, they've got gunk streaming down their face. Are we going to do a dilated complete exam today? No. We're going to deal with the conjunctivitis, and then we're going to have them come back, and we're going to do the complete exam, right? Same thing here. We've got a patient who's going to cataract surgery. Maybe they have diabetes. Maybe they have glaucoma. Doctors sort of think in shuntish land. So maybe cataract with a shunt. So it's going to be one cataract, two shunt or glaucoma, excuse me. <laughs> right. that's, that's what we're going for. Yeah. Even though they have diabetes, that's background right now. Right? Does that and make sense? Sure you're separating the, the glaucoma too. So the thinking it through, through you have to have them all. about the most imperative things that we're doing right. and what we're, we're attacking will help you be able to sort before you have that extra step. And I know what you're saying, Josh, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's, but it at is. least I but know it is how what to it, fix it. Yeah. It's, so, is it bad for me to click on the grid and add the code on the surgery scheduling page? Just in general. Is it the it's, worst? Is it messing it's up? It's creating yes. is it messing up? Is I'm, going to, say, okay. I'm going to say Fine. yes. Fine. And there's yes. multiple reasons oh, why. Yeah. Because I need to be able to assure the physicians that the information is correct. And if you guys are manip sure. manipulating it in that grid. And then so what about leaving old surgeries in that grid when they cancel? Because I've had issues where they go to scheduling and they're changing the date, and they're not realizing that there's another one in the grid. Yeah, that's we a bigger that. issue we for we the surgery that. schedulers yeah. Yeah. that we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Yes. But in general, for now, we're leaving it in the Yep, you, okay. you do your job by adding it so, to the grid. Right. So when we're in pre-op, if it says cataract right eye, cataract left eye, and you're actually doing left eye, do, do they need to change it to say left eye is before right eye? They should. Or if it, like today I had that's my cataract was clear down See. at the bottom, yeah. there was diabetic, glaucoma, that's why it terugium, it. cataract. That's why we gave you the option on, on the surgery scheduling page to be able to flip-flop those diagnoses on the surgery scheduling page so that it wouldn't impact clinic as big as it really is. But pre-op can flip those diagnoses and it can go to the um, surgery scheduling page. It doesn't affect, it doesn't fix the issue of what's going on in the ASC. In the ASC. Oh, so that's why so you guys got to. So what we really want to do we is we really want to go back to the to root. To We've made this. this to where this will help in the preoperative process for the patient in the surgery scheduling sheet since we're still using paper for that reason. 
So we've got a little bit of a stop check there, but our goal is to attack the issue at its root. Right. And how we're sorting them on the page is what's going to do that. And the problem, what has we're going to come back to you, Bria. What has happened is we've put three thrown band aids on the wound and it keeps bleeding. What happens and if we say we're doing left eye and the patient goes and talks to surgery scheduler and they go, oh, can I do the right eye? And the doctor says, we are, can we do well, the right one of the things that Ruth and I are going to be doing, we've had auto posts that we're working on right now, but we're going to do some troubleshooting on surgery summary, things like that, yeah. once we get the update in place. We do get that. We do yeah, get right. that sometimes yes. it's the patient who goes, surprise, this is what I want. Right. We understand mm -hmm. that. So um, our goal is if we can prove that the clinic is doing it right, right, then we can go and deal with those little things about what happens if this, what happens if that. But we're not getting it right in clinic. Right. So it's like that's our first step is let's get them right in clinic, and then we can deal with that percentage that flip-flops. So hang on. We, we, is this along those lines? Go ahead. You go first, then we'll go into Brie, Sorry. regardless of who says what. Um, I was just wondering <laughs> Sorry, if there needs to be an astigmatism diagnosis if we're doing lens X, even though it's not billed. Yes. There does. There, there doesn't have to be for billing reasons. Oh, okay. Currently. Um, so you're not being, you're not billing the lens X? You are billing the no, lens X? No, it's the patient's billing. paying for lens X. Oh, no, then, then, so no, then we don't need to that's, worry about that? Okay. That's an upgrade option, right? So right. That's, I mean, that's Currently, yes. I mean, we don't know what Medicare is going to do, and that sure. would be a dream situation if right. patients didn't have to pay for it. So that may change. Okay. But Those for right now, we're not going to okay. throw stones about that one. Yeah. Bree. Bree. So... <laughs> And I don't know what the main issue is yet, but I know some of the side issues, and I'm trying to comment on those and put them in the plan, and then we figure out what the main issue is, and I have to go back and change the order. You're saying that's so. Bad. All right, no, no, no. Uh, so you're yeah. coming. Let's just say we're going to copy and paste the plan. By the way, so yeah. what you're going to do here is um, you're coming into this page, and you know a couple of things. Yeah. You're going to be adding it here to the right. assessment. Right. Period. That's it. But then the doctor comes in and he says, okay, well, we're going to deal with the cataract number first, but your cataract is actually number three. Right. What you're going to do is you're going to hit sort, and you're going to sort right. it here first, right. and then Before. you're going to start saying, oh, number one, here's the plan, here's the details, now I'm going to add it to the grid. Can I just but, say, what I think you're saying, let me just see if I can bridge this gap, is that maybe Dr. K is talking about the retinal stuff or he's talking about something and he's giving some details that need to be in the plan. For other stuff. Right. And then you're ready to address whatever it is we're going to do surgery and about. Plan for other stuff. Right. Right. And you've already added it to the grid. Yeah. And that's a huge, that's, that's a, that's huge, a huge, huge problem because I'll tell that you right huge. now, stuff, oh. yeah. stuff's going to get missed. What would be nice, and I don't know if we could ever do this, but if we have one just impression plan box that goes over everything. So we can type everything the doctor has to say and then it automatically links it to all the diagnoses. Nope, that, that would never would, happen. That would be doable. <laughs> that that would, we're gonna okay, miss that. Right. Right. Can I just right. say, right. the reason it doesn't happen that way and the way it doesn't work that way is because medically speaking, every impression should have a separate plan. So why that's why it's never gonna talk? work that way. Why can't those two boxes talk? When you resort up here, why doesn't it resort down here? Yeah, that's great. an error in the template. And I'm not, I can't, well, I don't so know what's going on. It's a next gen issue. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a right. next gen is the template, so yeah. it's a template issue. I'm not guaranteed, I don't, I did not play with that on right. the impression and plan page in the upgrade. Uh -huh. It could be something that was addressed in the upgrade. Right. I don't know that at this point. I'm going to be looking. That's I'll go back that that would be given. So yeah. we're hoping that at some point in an update, it will resolve. And yes. then I have one more question. Sure. So a lot of times we're following like a macular clocker or something like an ear. And so I do copy that from the follow-up. And we just follow it, follow it, follow it. And then we have to schedule surgery. You're saying at that point, I should know like, okay, don't. Copy Correct. That. Correct. Yeah, you know, again, every time, until you're going to schedule surgery, it's fine to pull it from previous, but that minute that you're going to be scheduling surgery, do not pull it from the previous. Okay. So with that, should it be just suggested that you pull from the previous plan, just open that plan, copy, paste that info into today's so it's a fresh one that's in today's and you're not just pulling it forward? I would suggest what, 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 anytime we don't have to copy data yeah. forward, we don't. Well, right. Just what for, I, what I, mean is I hear what you're saying. To, yeah, you're not trying to pull it, right? Yeah. 
I hear what you're saying. Here's the issue. Uh -huh. The more we copy data for, the more our auditing integrity goes down. So the thing, the thing yeah. with this copy-paste is auditors have gotten savvy enough to realize it says the same.